much every time that I hear the name God, you know, seriously talked about, I get this tingly feeling all over my body. And for a long time I thought, wow, that you know, I must be having some sort of religious experience that must be God trying to tell me that, okay, what you're feeling is real, what you're feeling is me, it's genuine. But then I realized that, that there were a number of other instances in my life where every single time it happened, I felt the same tingly feeling, and it was a predisposition in my head that made me feel that way. It wasn't this act that was making me feel so incredible, making me feel... You know, this but how do you know that those other times weren't also God coming in a different form, a different face? Because they were having. They were, they, if they God were, is all powerful and God is everywhere, then you wouldn't only think of God when the name God came up. Okay, I will tell you two things. One is there were there were situations where God had nothing to do with it, and second. One of the best books that my parents ever bought me, um, I forget the title, it was something like Make Believe or Just Believe or something. Mm -hmm. But the premise of the book, they got, they got it for me when I was about six or seven. It was a book, and it was comparing Santa Claus to Jesus. Oh. And, uh, that no. sounds like a Saturday Night Live sketch. No, it was, no, it, it was completely serious, and it was talking about all the parallels between, you know, God and, uh, and you know... Well, that would have to be Santa a stretch, Claus. because no. Santa Claus is based on a pagan... Right, okay, but then again... If but there, then but, again, but, you could say, yes. so was Jesus. Yes. I, I have no doubts in my mind. Jesus was a real person. Do you really? Whereas, no doubts at all? I... Why would I not believe that Jesus was a real person? Uh, however, what about I, what about my theory from no, earlier no, no, tonight? Hold on, hold on, Do you think about, that that might have been true? No, hold on. About all the real powers and being being you know uh, turning into a god or him being the son of God. Right. I have doubts about that. But why would I have disbelief about him being a, a real person? Do I believe he was resurrected? I, you know, I I have no proof of that. But right. I, why why should I say? whether he actually existed or not. You know, that's that's not the issue. You know, I may think that, hey, he existed, and people just extenuated his, you know, existence and made up these stories. Sure, You sure. know? Yeah. And in fact, not. if you look back at um, the, all of you know, the teachings that are in the gospel, if, if you look at the, um, the essential teachings of Jesus, they are from a group called the Essenes, E-S-S-E-N-E-S, -S -E -S, Wikipedia. But the Essenes were in their heyday at about 50 B.C., two generations before Jesus was even born. So these weren't Jesus' teachings. These were the teachings of the Essenes that Jesus was influenced by and, and, and passed on. And, I mean, obviously, you know, he didn't pull them out of his ass. They came from somewhere. You know, and then, and then there is the then there is the um, concept of was Jesus actually one person, or was Jesus a combination of um, a, a bit of a zealot and a patriot who the Romans actually crucified because he was anti-Roman, um, with the teachings of the Essenes. Let's you know, let's create this superhero, you know larger than life figure, like James Dean is today to us, or mm -hmm. Abraham Lincoln, or, you know, or um, all these people who we we attribute all these, George Washington, uh, we attribute these stories to, and how do you know they're real? How do you know that George Washington cut down the cherry tree? It's just a story. And same thing with Jesus. Now me, frankly, I think Jesus was a real person. But I don't think he was the son of God. I think that uh, he was basically just a teacher who had a lot of really good ideas. And here's fair enough, the one fair thing enough. that Jesus said, and this is this is why I'm a Buddhist, is that Jesus said, um, I am what each of you will become. And um, 
I think that that's the thing. Is don't worship Jesus. Don't think of him as God. Try to be like, you know, what would Jesus do? You know, it's a it's a cliche, blah blah blah. But don't don't you know he's don't worship a, a plus sign. <laughs> that's what it is. Worship a torture. Worship an implement of torture. <laughs> the cross. Oh. And it just pisses me off to sit there and, and, and think that all these people are so devoutly Catholic or so devoutly Christian. Oh, and then the Church of Christ, those are the worst. Yes. The evangelicals. Hold on, hold on. Sorry out there to any evangelical friends yeah. who are on my MySpace list. Don't yeah. delete me. No, no, no. no be it you They've already deleted me long ago. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, but, then, but then sit there and, and, and think about what... You know, they're actually believing in, like, they believe wholeheartedly in any any word of the Bible, any word of God. Literalist. It's not. Oh, yeah. But when I when I studied the Bible, you had incest in there. You had murder. You had you child had, sacrifice. You, child sacrifice. You had all this stuff. Oh, yeah. And you're going to condone a Lord that, that will do all this stuff? But whenever I ask any Christians or Catholics or evangelicals or whatever about it, they, they find some excuse around it. And I'm like, no, wait a second. This is your holy book. This is not my holy book. This well, is listen. your testament that you sit there and talk about, and you're going to sit there and deny part of it just to make yourselves look better? That pisses me off. Well, you know, it, it is, it is, it, it does take a, a certain sophisticated, it does take a certain sophisticated mind to accept ambiguity. And so you're saying I'm not sophisticated? No, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about these Christians. Okay. In terms of they take the word in the Bible as the word of God because they can't accept or handle that some of it's true and some of it's not true. It's really hard in this modern world to live with ambiguity because we don't, we aren't, we were meant, I mean, our society was built around truths being handed to us and it's only in the last few hundred years that we have had the freedom to, to question those truths and it's easy to question the truths it's hard to replace those truths with new truths you know what I'm saying and so that's why um, fundamentalism is well, that's so appealing because people it's, were that being told why, with why, what the, you think that's why for Dan so long. Girl's cult is so appealing, is that it offers you answers to modernity. And I'd like to think that everybody has the potential to find those answers within themselves, but they don't. And um, I'm glad that I have, and I understand it, but go for it. Try to find those answers within yourself. And, and don't look in a book or to somebody else to give you those answers find them within yourself and and, and live by them